Hi, I'm Jeff Meads from Tennessee Twin. Uh, welcome to part two of my top tips for better Facebook Live broadcasts. Well, welcome back. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for everybody that watched part one. Uh, I've got some unbelievable feedback and uh, that's really, really cool and really kind. So uh, it's kind of motivated me to get on and record part two. Uh, we're hoping to do uh, one part every day this week to help you with your Facebook Live broadcasts. So thanks once again, I hope you're gonna enjoy it. And today, tip number two is all about microphones. So as musicians, uh, microphones is something we have to get used to pretty quickly usually, uh, whether it be in a recording studio or of course doing a live gig. Now microphones comes in, come in lots and lots of shapes and sizes and for Facebook Live we're going to be pretty limited within that unless we invest in some pretty sophisticated equipment. So what I want to do is just talk briefly about the types of microphones we see um, and some you might be able to use for your Facebook broadcasts. Um, now microphones come predominantly um, categorised in their pickup pattern. So for example, um, the trusted, I've got some props today by the way, I hope you're going to enjoy those, uh, the trusted SM58, which is for most of us probably the first microphone uh, we ever experienced in any um, uh, serious way. The SM58 is a vocal stage microphone and it has a pickup pattern which we call cardioid, that is the pickup is predominantly from the front. So if I sing into the microphone like this, the pickup pattern, I'm right in the middle of the pickup pattern, that's where it's strongest. Now it does still pick up a little bit from the back. Um, some micro uh, microphones designed for stage, uh, for example, some of the posher Sennheisers and Neumann microphones are what we call hi hypercardioid. Get that right in a moment, hypercardioid. And that means that whilst they're pickup is exact, is in the front strongest, it's much weaker in the back. And that's really useful, for example, if you're singing into a microphone and having a lot of f feed from the stage wedge monitors, that reduces the chances of feedback. Um, other pickup patterns you might come across, um, there's figure of eight microphones. Those are typically used in recording studios where they pick up both from the front and the back, but not so much at the sides. Uh, and then we have the omnidirectional microphone. Now omnidirectional microphones are great for recording ambient sounds and the atmosphere within a room uh, and also used for measurement as well. They're really useful for when you don't know where the sound is actually going to come from. So if we take that information and think about our phone, which is for most of us what we're probably going to be broadcasting to Facebook Live on, what microphones can we expect in our smartphone? Well, actually, there's multiple microphones these days in a smart smartphone. For example, this iPhone has microphones in the bottom, um, which is used to pick up our voice when we're actually on a telephone call. Um, then we also have a microphone at the back for when we're using for video. If I'm pointing this at somebody, there is a microphone pointing that way. Now, the mics on uh, phones are not just used for recording and telephone conversations, though. When we put up our phone to our ear, some of the microphones within the smartphone are actually used for noise cancelling. So what they do is they pick up the ambient sounds from outside and feed that back in something called antiphase to cancel out what we hear so that we hear mostly the person on the other end of the phone call rather than some of the, uh, the stuff that's going around in ambient. Now it's not perfect, but it is slightly effective and it really does help. So what happens when you record your Facebook Live using a smartphone? What tends to happen um, is that you're probably going to, of course, have it this way round and so that you can see um, what's actually going on to make sure you're in shot. And that means you're probably going to be using the microphones at the bottom of the phone. Now those mics are unfortunately pretty much omnidirectional. They're going to be picking up as much information from behind the phone uh, as in front of the phone. And that's where the problems can start to arrive with uh, using smartphones for recording or broadcasting Facebook Live because you're picking up a lot of the room sound uh, as well as the actual musical performance from you, the performer, and your instrument. So what can we do to help that? Well, there's a few things we can do, actually. Um, 
For example, we can take our smartphone like this and we can cite something absorbing behind it. A cushion works pretty well here. Make sure, of course, that the microphones are still able to hear what's coming in. But if you're putting a cushion behind it, that will dramatically reduce the amount of sound coming from behind and getting into the microphone. That can really help. Now, I've seen some people um, using sort of stick on bits of cardboard and all sorts of interesting things to help with the pickup pattern from a smart microphone, uh, smartphone microphone. And by all means, give those a go too. So that's what we can do as a from with a standard smartphone. Um, now, something if you um, want to get a bit more involved to get better, better quality, we can start to look at some of the clip-in microphones made by some of the great manufacturers like uh, Zoom and Rode and Shure uh, that are designed to work in your phone and give you better sound quality. And I have to be honest, I invested in one of those a couple of years ago um, so that when we're writing, we actually get a better quality of sound. Now, I looked at a few different ones uh, from those manufacturers and they're all pretty darn good. And if you're just recording sound, pretty much any of them will give you a massive improvement over the one that's in your phone. However, uh, I went with this one in the end. Um, this is not a particular endorsement. You might find better uh, products for you, but this particular one works for me. This is the Shure MV58. A um, couple of things I really liked about this one. First off, when you've got your phone, most of the clip-in microphones clip on this end and pick up predominantly from this direction. Now that's great if you're just recording sound, but if you're trying to record picture as well, then obviously if it's pointing in that direction, it's probably not pointing in the direction that you want it to, to pick up your singing and playing. So the reason I bought this one particularly, as we clip in here, is that it tilts. We can tilt it over, and we can point it at the person that's performing as well as them seeing what the, the picture is looking like while they're actually playing. There's a couple of neat little tricks in this one and probably in the other apps too. Uh, the app that comes with it allows you to alter the directionality of the microphone within the software. And that's pretty useful because if you're a bit further away, that squeezes in the directionality and therefore you can pick up sound with a bit less from the sides and a bit more down the middle for you, from you, the performer. The other thing the app does for this one uh, like I suspect others too, is adds a little bit of audio compression. And audio compression is quite useful for Facebook Live type things because we're going to bring up some of the quieter sounds and squash down some of the louder sounds. And that can help you get that sound right through, especially when the person at the other end might be listening to your performance on some pretty basic speakers, um, maybe even just their laptop or out of the end of their phone, which is not exactly going to be high fidelity. Now to move on beyond something like a clip-in microphone, we're then going to use some kind of audio interface. Now in the first, last few years, there's been a few um, audio interfaces. They tend to be quite small add-on devices that clip in or go in via a cable to the bottom of your phone by the USB-C or by the lightning con uh, connector, something like that. I've not tended to use these, so I can't recommend a particular one, but they come from all sorts of reputable manufacturers, so I'm sure they're pretty darn good. Most of them take a mono input from a microphone, either a Lavalier microphone, which is a little tie clip thing you see the people presenting the news wear, which is not really ideal for what we want for Facebook, um, or take in a standard XLR connector, the sort of thing you're used to seeing on the end of your vocal microphone. So what sort of microphone might be best to actually fit use with one of those interfaces? Well, again, lots and lots of choices. But one of the things you might look at is a condenser mic. Now, our SM58 and all of its uh, um, contemporaries, um, these are what we call dynamic microphones. They don't require any power. Uh, they have a coil inside which moves with the air pressure changes caused by your performance. And that coil moves around a magnet and a little a tiny electrical current comes out the back. Now, the problem with dynamic microphones is they're very, very good in terms of sound pressure. So you can yell it into these pretty loudly and put them in front of guitar uh, uh, amplifiers and that kind of stuff. 
uh, but they're not very good at doing very high-end, high-frequency resolution. So if you want to catch the nuances of a, uh, a really good vocal performance, particularly a female vocal performance, or things like stringed instruments, guitars and um, acoustic guitars, that is, uh, violins and that kind of thing, they're not really the best thing, uh, apart from some very few exceptions like the Shure SM7, which is very, very good at that. So normally, as engineers, we turn to a condenser mic. This is my favorite budget condenser, as it happens. There's lots of good ones around these days. Uh, this is the Audio-Technica AT2020, uh, well under 100 quid, one of these things. Uh, very, very nicely made for, for, the, for the money, but also a great sound. Um, I often find some particularly male vocalists actually sound nicer on one of these than something more expensive, just because the character suits their voice. But if you're looking for a condenser microphone uh, to go into your phone to pick up um, the, the nuances of a, particularly a, a voice and a female voice, then these can be wonderful. Now, one of the things you need to watch out for with condensers is they require power. Some of them have battery compartments in, uh, something like the AKG C1000, uh, which is a kind of a condenser pencil microphone, been around for years, has a little battery compartment in. Otherwise, if you can't, uh, if your microphone doesn't have that, chances are if it's a condenser, you're going to be using something called phantom powering, and that is a system whereby the uh, uh, the interface will actually send some power down the XLR cable to be received and used by the mic, um, and that typically is about 48 volts. So if you're going to buy a condenser, have a look to see if it requires phantom power or uses a battery, and you're going to have to make plans for whichever one of those you're going to need. Now, moving beyond that, if you want to get even more sophisticated, there's a couple of other options. Um, now there's some very, very good standalone audio recorders, which also act as interfaces. So you have microphones on the outside, and then you have XLRs out or USB out uh, that you can connect into your computer or maybe even your phone. Um, in fact, we're recording this particular um, uh, video using just one of those things. This particular uh, um, audio recorder is a Zoom H4, um, and it's sitting just off to the side of the picture. You can't see it there, um, about a foot or so from my face. And that's what we're using to record this particular video. Also really useful for things like writing and location recording as well. Finally, when we get up to the higher end interfaces, and particularly when you move to using a laptop rather than a phone, you can have some really cool things. One of the things that we use for our sofa sessions, the Tennessee Twin sofa sessions, please go look those up on YouTube, is we use one point source stereo microphone, either the audio recorder that we're using today, or in some cases, this guy. This is a dedicated stereo microphone. Now you'll see it has a rather odd end to it. It doesn't have the usual kind of ball shape. It has two microphone capsules in there, one for left, one for right. And instead of the normal three pin XLR, we actually have a five pin XLR in there to get all of the signals out. Now this is a dedicated stereo microphone. And if you're picking up things like acoustic guitars or more than one person singing but fairly close proximity, then actually this can be wonderful, but it is a specialist device and you'll typically need a stereo interface for using a computer to use that for your broadcast. So finally, just want to talk about mic placement. Think about when you're using your microphone, for example, this guy here, the condenser. Um, remember that it's due to pick up from you performing in this side here. It will also pick up a bit from the back, and we've already said for the just using a smartphone, actually having some absorbing material like a cushion or heavy curtain or some other sound absorption behind here can stop even more uh, the sound coming in from the back and give you a nice dry direct sound for your performance. But also remember if I'm singing like this, then what it's also picking up is things just to the side of my head. So if you have sound coming off, bouncing off the back wall there and other sources back there, it's going to be very, very sensitive to those. So actually performing in front of a heavy curtain or something like that can really, really help, particularly absorb some of the higher frequencies and cut down on that room sound that we spoke about yesterday. So 
I hope that's been useful. As I say, thanks for all the great feedback. If you do have particular questions that you're uh, wondering about or problems you're facing, then feel free to put them in the comments of this video and we'll, I'll certainly try and get to those. Meanwhile, I'm really looking forward to some of the Facebook performances coming up. Some of my absolute favourite artists uh, coming up this week to play. So I'll be looking at uh, viewing those and having a look at how good they sound. Meanwhile, please do check out the Sofa Sessions, our Sofa Sessions for te from Tennessee Twin on YouTube. And if you like what you're uh, hearing on these videos, please do press the subscribe button down below. And uh, as I say, we're aiming to put out one of these every, every day for the next week or so. Meanwhile, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.